Sarah, why don't you take us to France? Good morning. That was such a fun intro. I was like dancing behind my screen. Uh, so yes, we're going to focus on the Belle Epoque, which is the period of, um, it's a period of French and European history, usually dated between around the 1870s until the outbreak of World War I. Um, and occurring, it was occurring during the Third French Republic. It was a period characterized by optimism, peace, prosperity, and innovation. In this era, France's cultural and artistic climate, particularly within Paris, the arts flourished with numerous masterpieces of literature, music, theater, and visual art gaining extensive recognition. The Belle Epoque was named in retrospect when it began to be considered a continental European golden age, in contrast to the horrors of the Napoleonic Wars and then World War I, which kind of uh, flanked it on either sides. Uh, the Belle Epoque was a period in which, according to historian R.R. R. Palmer, quote, European civilization achieved its greatest power in global politics and also exerted its maximum influence upon peoples outside of Europe. So we'll look at different artists and pieces that were created during this time. Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec is an artist we've talked about in a previous town hall and one of my personal favorites. Uh, if you recall, he was most famous for his posters of Can Can Dancers. Uh, this piece highlights his more classical training that he received earlier in his career. He probably painted this work while studying in the Parisian atelier of the popular painter Fernand Cormont. This piece is a careful study of human anatomy and it hangs in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. Uh, the marble polisher is indicative of the academic training that Cormont provided, but Toulouse-Lautrec also uses broken brushwork and colored shadows here, techniques that derive from his impressionist contemporaries. Here we have another Toulouse-Lautrec piece. Uh, this was painted when he was 18 years old in Albi, France, where he was born and raised. And he was born into aristocracy. And at this time, he was living at Celeron, the castle and estate that his family owned. And so here he painted one of the workers on the estate. And the painting is on display at the Musée Toulouse-Lautrec in Albi, where there is the largest collection of his work. This one should look familiar. Les Demoiselles d'Avignon marks a radical break from traditional composition and perspective in painting. It depicts five naked women composed of flat splintered planes whose faces were inspired by Iberian sculpture and African masks. Picasso unveiled the monumental painting in his Paris studio after months of revision. And the Avignon of the word's title is actually a reference to a street in Barcelona famed for its brothels. Uh, and if you remember last week talking about El Greco, as sort of the precursor to cubism. And I mentioned that Picasso was very much inspired by him, especially for this piece in particular. Bal du Moulin de la Galette, or Dance at the Moulin de la Galette, is an 1876 painting by French artist Pierre-Auguste Renoir. It's housed at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris and is one of Impressionism's most celebrated masterpieces. Uh, the painting depicts a typical Sunday afternoon at the original Moulin de la Galette, which is in the district of Montmartre in Paris. And in the late 19th century, working class Parisians would dress up and spend time there just dancing and drinking and eating galettes into the evening. Uh, like other works of Renoir's early maturity, Val de le Moulin de la Galette is a typically impressionist snapshot of real life. I love this one. So Guillemar was an illustrator at the time and he did a series of illustrations of what he thought life would look like in the year 2000. Uh, so this particular one is called 21st Century Correspondence. And I have to say, he's not too far off. Uh, there's a woman being projected onto a screen and the man's kind of able commu to communicate with her through this huge gramophone type thing. And besides the fashion and general technology, it's not too different to us being on Zoom right now. Uh, he has many different illustrations that are in the public domain, so I suggest looking through those if you're interested and, and you have some time. They're very funny. Uh, so here's another Renoir. The Swing is an uh, 1876 oil painting displayed in the Musée d'Orsay as well. The piece was painted in what would now be the Musée de Montmartre Gardens. 
and he had rented a cottage in the garden so that he could be closer to the Moulin de la Galette where he was engaged in painting the piece that we just saw. Uh, Renoir's people seem to stand on a forest floor of blossoms and there's a movement or kind of flickering to the light, particularly on the clothing and the ground. And this actually really annoyed the critics when the painting was shown at the Impressionist exhibit of 1877. The model was Jean Saint-Marie, a favorite of Renoir's, who appears in many of his paintings. And the two men are Renoir's brother Edmund and a painter friend Norbert Gonet. So this was painted by Julius LeBlanc Stewart, who was an American. He was from Philadelphia, but moved over to Paris with his family in 1865 when he was only 10 years old. So his nickname was the Parisian from Philadelphia. Uh, and his family's wealth led him to live a very lavish expatriate lifestyle. As you can see here by the dress of the people's quite different than Renoir's ball in the Moulin de la Galette. Um, this piece is done in the style of realism. And it's in a private collection, so there's not a ton of information, but I believe it's a ball celebrating a wedding and included our members of high society, such as actress Lily Langtree and Baron Rothschild. A uh, one period critic named Jean Berrault, the quote, man of the crowds. Uh, true to his reputation in this scene, the artist depicts a flock of congregants wearing their Sunday best emerging from mass. The church of Saint Philippe du Roule and the surrounding street of Rue du Faubourg Saint-Honoré, which had recently become a popular street for shopping in Paris, uh, they were known to attract Paris's high society. Uh, when Barreau exhibited this painting in the Salon of 1877, it garnered praise for being completely Parisian and up-to-date. And finally, we have another ball, but this is a ball on a boat. In this work, James Tissot paints a modern life scene in full sunlight. It depicts an August sailing regatta on the Isle of Wight in the UK. And the scene calls to mind celebrity parties held on royal yachts. Uh, the pairing of identical dresses was a fashion established by the royal family at the time. And so we have the woman in the straw hat um, kind of standing by the railing and she's been mistaken for Queen Alexandra. However, others wondered if the revelers were more ordinary. Mass-produced clothing and social mobility were dis disrupting class boundaries, and Tissot's picture enjoys these playful confusions of the modern crowd. So there's a brief overview of some of the art of the Belle Epoque, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. What a beautiful time, and I just really love seeing all those dresses. I do, too. It was beautiful. The Very last beautiful. one in particular. Oh, yes.